Hey YouTube, I know it's been a while since I've posted, but I've been sort of looking for a reason to post, if you know what I mean, and um, the last video uh, didn't work out too well, because I had, um, I recorded from um, my uh, eyesight, which ended up for some reason, when I uploaded it to YouTube, the sound sort of lagged behind the video, so it was, yeah, kind of irritating. But anyway, um, I'm using my Samsung Galaxy S2, amazing phone, to record um, my videos from now on because well, let's face it, the, the camera on there looks shoddy. Anyway, uh, the topic uh, that I just want to bring up is is evolution and creationism and I, what I don't quite get why there's still a debate. Um, I understand that there's trolls on the internet, clearly, but then there are actually people who seriously believe creationism has any valid uh, any validity at all and um, it, it is a little troubling because I, I start to wonder okay well uh, there might be a you know I'm not quite sure at times where they're coming from the first premise um, that many Christians uh, or believers of any deity have is that their scripture is absolutely true that is the first premise. If your scripture is absolutely true, then everything in it therefore must be true. And they conclude that because of that, the book of Genesis, that, uh, because it is in a book that they believe is true, and everything in the book therefore must be true, then creation must be true. The problem is, is that their entire religion is based on two premises, not just that one, the second premise is that Jesus is the Son of God, or in, depending on what you believe, uh, the incarnation of God in human form. And that premise is stands as is, because without that premise, then, uh, then because Jesus refers back to the Bible, especially Genesis, many times during his um, lifetime. And, and calls creationism and Genesis true. And if he was the Son of God or the incarnation of God, then therefore the entire circle must be true. Knock one or the other and the, vil the validity of the entire Christian faith is questionable. Now, I'm not going to bother arguing the point that Jesus is um, not the Son of God, because either way you can't prove it. So, it's down to people's opinion. However, you can logically debate that the Bible is not valid as, as any kind of truth. Um, script, not just scripture-wise, but um, in terms of a, a document of truth or a historic record. Um, it is not... Um, it doesn't have... It doesn't hold any significant uh, value... You know, it doesn't warrant any significant, you know, attention as, as a historical piece of evidence. Um, and my reasoning for this is quite simple. Number one, the authors of the Bible cannot be proven. You cannot prove who wrote the Bible. Um, you know, you can prove that Galileo wrote his texts, or you can prove that Nostradamus wrote the prophecies. Those those kind of things, but you can't prove. Uh, beyond reasonable doubt, that the Bible was written by who they that who it is claimed to have been written by. Um, Genesis, for one, is one of those books that was written by Moses apparently um, through the word of God. So let's assume that that Moses did write the book of Genesis. That. And, and that he wrote it through the word of God. That automatically makes me start to think, well, hang on a second, J.K. Rowling could have written the Harry Potter series from the word of God. But if she had have stated that, everyone would have turned around to her and said, that's blasphemy, you're, you know, you're against religion, blah, blah, blah. And it was the same kind of deal for Abraham and Moses and, and later Jesus that kind of stuff still happened. And it, it was quite prevalent in the Bible. My point here is that anyone can write anything and just say that the Word of God was on it. 
Or they could have had a dream and writ written about that dream and said that God talked to them. Or they could have seen God. The problem with this is quite obvious. Seeing things or hearing things that aren't there is a sign of madness, schizophrenia, or just being plain high. You know, and there'll be a popular criticism of that statement by saying, well, he did exist because he did come before Moses. Um, I'm sorry if this seems a bit indelicate to you, but you can't prove it. And for something that you can't prove, you cannot use it as a factual as factual evidence. At the same time, we can't. Uh, so because we can't prove that Moses uh, wrote Genesis from the Word of God, we cannot prove Genesis is correct in any way, shape, or form, and is therefore invalid as a factual scripture. If Genesis is is just the first book of the Bible, which by the way is just a handful of books tied together under one name. It was never really intended to be one book. Uh, basically, a bunch of Protestants and Catholics came to an agreement on what should be in the Bible and what shouldn't be. And they excluded several books, and they and they reworded it some, uh, some of the way so that the Catholics and the Protestants could, uh, could live in, in a sort of a society that wouldn't conflict each other. Uh, it is well documented um, by scholars and philosophers of the time that Jesus was born during April, not during December. The December is a, um, December is a pagan holiday. Um, I, should have said, I shouldn't have said... Sorry. Basically, the Catholics and the, and the pagans sat down and, and discussed what, sh what should and shouldn't be in the Bible. They excluded um, several books and they reworded the ones that they selected as to fit into a single category, which is Christianity. Um, I guess you you can also add, um, a, you know, Anglicanism, you know, Greek Orthodox. Those other religions all come under that one umbrella because they follow the same scripture. But the fact of the matter is, it's all from different religions. And they're all different books from different scriptures from different times that have sort of just been bunched together and edited so that they work for the political purposes of the people of the time. To me, and I think to any logical and reasonable person, that is propaganda. That isn't truth or the word of God. Because if it was truly the word of God, every single book would have been included. Nothing, none of Jesus' disciples would have been discluded um, in, in the scripture. But they were discluded for reasons that, you know, they were preaching wrong. And, and, and little things like that. And so, I'm going to go back to my point of Genesis, of the book of Genesis being false. This can further be proven by further biological explanation. Inbreeding is the major one. How do you get genetic diversity, such as with humans, that have allowed us to spread at such a, you know, such a rate that we have spread across the globe and inhabit every known place except for Antarctica? The only possibility that I can come to in my head is that we order or from the beginning, from when modern humans came into existence, gradually through evolution, there were already plenty of gene pools. And that in itself is what enabled us to flourish. If Adam and Eve truly did conceive all of us, and I mean being descended from two beings, there would be only one gene pool. There are already two problems with this. Number one, we would all not be here. And number two, we would uh, the, the beings that were here before us, before the humans died off, would have been severely retarded. And I mean that in the most sensitive way that I can possibly put it, because inbreeding never works, especially direct inbreeding with, um, uh, with brothers and cousins and, and so on, because the DNA 
uh, DNA mutations triple and it becomes a big mess. Um, very rarely do you ever get healthy babies from inbreeding. And even if you do, there, uh, further down the line you will get massive mutations and they would have carried on because the gene pool would not have changed. Now if there was two gene pools, the species could last a bit longer, but again, it would eventually go into extinction. An example of a limited gene pool leading to extinction is the Tassie Devil. Now despite the fact that there is actually a raging infection that's killing them off, um, if that were to be eradicated, they're already screwed because the genetic uh, diversity is very low. Um, there is no more than 20 to 50 gene pools left. And so, and, and they have limited breeding seasons, the Tazi Devils. So not only do they have to find each other at the right time, but their off, they have to not be related in order to have healthy off, offspring. And so now the government's trying to increase the gene pool by sp specifically selecting devils um, from their gene pools and, and mixing them so that the gene pools um, become more diverse and so that eventually um, hopefully within the next hundred years they can be reintroduced into the wild but it will not happen for a very long time if at all. So what's the point I'm trying to make? Well the point is simply if Genesis is false which by all reasonable standards is then therefore you can call any book in the Bible into question because it's supposed to be a fully truthful scripture. If one book is false and Genesis is the one that you can pick at the most, you can pick fallacies in that on every page. You know, and, and different people interpret it differently, which to me is a bit shoddy because then you've got different people with different opinions. Sci uh, science is not like religion. Science, there is one truth and there is only one opinion, and that is the theory. The theory itself, with evidence backing it up. The theory of abiogenesis and evolution are both um, both equally as plausible as each other. And at the same time, not only are they plausible, but they've been proven. Abiogenesis has been proven in the 1960, uh, in 1962, if I remember correctly. I was just reading up on it. Um, by an experiment... Um, Now, I'm not going to go too much into geology and, and, and that sort of thing, but uh, the Earth, uh, 3 billion, 3.6 billion years ago, was mainly hydrogen. It had other components, obviously, but it was mainly hydrogen. Um, The Miller, sorry, the Miller and Urey exper experiment in 1953 proved that a lightning strike to um, hydrogen can ca uh, causes um, molecules to form, specifically molecules such as amino acids, which we know um, are what form proteins, and proteins in turn are able to form life. The earliest of life would have come across in those forms, and it would have it wouldn't have taken long. Uh, it will it would have taken a while, but we can see that for the first one billion years uh, of life on Earth, even if it is very simple, it was mainly just squabble, squabble, squabble in terms of proteins and code. Uh, whatever didn't mix died off, and whatever did survived for however long it could while the environment was changing at such a rapid rate. Complex life forms did eventually emerge and we can trace that back as far as the sea sponge um, which of course um, branches out into every known living uh, being um, on earth today. So what I'm trying to say is basically this. 
how can any person with any knowledge of the world around them believe in creationism and and the word of God over things that are just plain obvious and proven something that cannot be rebutted something as pure as science and I think evolution was pretty much it was was plausible but was could not be applied directly to life until the discovery and um, and basically the, the the rigorous study of DNA and the ability to be able to find out that DNA could be tr had code and could be traced and you could find and every and every um, creature on the planet had different DNA and so that allowed us to be able to say well okay well we're related to this animal more closely than this animal because of our DNA. To, to, to finish off, I just, if any Christians are watching this, and I doubt that they are, but if any Christians are watching this, I'd really like your feedback because this is a question that's been baffling me all day. I've just been sitting on my computer reading these uh, comments that I'm seeing on all these forums and I just keep thinking, are there still, I know that there's still creationists out there, but I'm wondering how a logical person, well, how any person, how any human being with a brain as sophisticated as our own, can come to that kind of conclusion. So, um, uh, I don't know, uh, video responses or comments would be brilliant. Uh, thanks for watching.